Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Nick here, and today we're going to take an in-depth look of Kese Kitame, a move used by Gohin and Gali in Virtua Fighter. Kese Kitame, otherwise known as Scarf Hole, is Judo's ultimate pit. In Virtua Fighter 4 or 5, you can use Kese Kitame as a move on a downed opponent after completing a throw, thus adding more damage and doing the grappling in a sort of combination. However, how the move is performed in the game is somewhat unrealistic as demonstrated in the video. So, we want to have this ability to throw the weight. Reason being, you're not necessarily going to go to Keza Katame from a standing position unless you still have your grips and you have completed a throw. So we're just going to discuss this in a bit more depth. So, the move in the game is shown like so, where he gets the grip, moves the arm up, hand behind the head, firmly on the rib, leg underneath the arm, knee pointed forward. Alright, there are reasons for this position, because now if I lean forward, he cannot take his, his hand and push me back and head scissors. This is here, lifting up the arm, allowing me to wedge my leg underneath his armpit, underneath his shoulder. All right, and this foot's here, so he can't hook onto it with his other leg, breaking the pin. And this way, I can have my weight onto his rib, and he can't bridge against me or away from me. I've got complete control. This hand is over here, so I can adjust accordingly, depending on when he bridges. I can bring this hand here to modify it a bit, to make it a bit tighter. However, the move in the game deals damage. So, when a pin is used as a form of control, how does it deal damage? Well, it's not going to deal damage the way it's shown in the game, or how I demonstrate it now. We would have to modify it. So, let's take a real life example. When Josh Barnett, Tapped out Dean Lister. That looks very uncomfortable. Dean does not like this. It's very hard for Dean to breathe. He used a modified form of scarf hole. And this is how it works. By sitting on the rib first of all. Alright? So now I'm directly sitting on his rib. And then this hand and this backhand clamp together. Now with me sitting on his rib and driving. I could put a lot of pressure onto the ribcage, on, onto the lungs. This restricts breathing. By putting the pressure onto the lungs, you're restricting your opponent's ability to use his diaphragm to breathe and suck in wind. So, this is usually very effective with bigger opponents on smaller opponents. But, you know, if you're a smaller guy and you're facing a big guy, and if you can put some pressure onto the lungs, make your opponent suffer a little bit with the breathing and make him, and make him tired. As when somebody get, becomes tired, they become a bit of a coward, taking away their confidence to attack. So when you take away somebody's confidence to attack, it allows you to attack more. Two thirds should percent. I got 141 and two-thirds chance of winning at sacrifice. The numbers don't lie. So if we want to apply the Kezekatame, it would become, come from different positions. So let's say if I have, for example, completed a throw, and I'm standing like so, which allows me to bring the leg in and pull up my opponent. So I can get into this pin position. I personally use Kese Kitame myself. I play a style of jujitsu of where I use movement to control my opponent. I know the opponent's reaction and I use that against them. 
I am past this point of fighting for positions. I want to play. Instead, you have that knowledge of knowing what the reaction is and you go with it to move into the next position to maintain dominance. So for example, if I have a good side control and they manage to get their grips, I'm not gonna fight it. If they bridge that way, I let them bridge and I go to that Kezakatame position. Flattening them out again in order to get a deeper side control. And I like sitting on the rib every time with my weight forward going across the neck, not over the chest. Because I don't want them to be able to roll me over, one. And two, I want to restrict their movement and breathing. Because as soon as I know I get into this position and I'm using an underhook here at the arm, I know they're going to want to try and bridge again or bridge into me in order to break the position because I'm sitting on them. And as they do so, I move into a deeper side control. Or sometimes I even allow them to push my head because I know they want to get my head between their legs. So when they do that, when they push against the head, this hand slides through here and I move with it and I just control the hips. And I pin the legs together. But once again, the main detail of this video is to explain how Kesekatame actually works. And it is used as a pin. It can inflict damage if you modify it a little bit. That's not shown in the game. But once again, in the game, it's just used to carry forward a grappling combination in order to inflict more damage on a downed opponent. Hey guys, thank you for making it to the end of the video. I hope you found it informative. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and hit the bell notification icon so that you can stay up to date with my latest content as it comes out. Are there any more moves from fighting games that you would like an in-depth study of so that you can understand how the mechanics work in real life combat or sport? Then please, let me know in the comment section down below. I would love to break these down for you. As always, stay safe, look after yourself, and until next time, have a good rest of your day.